first on BBC One, a new series of Paddington Green. That's the kit I've got to sort my life out. <laughs> See the things you do to people, it kick back on you. Oh, it hurts me so much, it really does. At Galwick Airport, the late flight from Tenerife is just landing. An old phase is returning to Paddington Green. During the last few months, Jackie's been running away from her problems. Back again? In her first attempt to sort her life out, she escaped to Dover. When you are gulping a bottle of wine, sand, then you have to go and get a bottle of whiskey, then you have to go and get some gin, then you have to go to work with a bottle in your hands. That's... that's not good. Maybe I'm lonely and that's what I'm running away from. Next, she gave up her flat. I can only get worse if I stay here anywhere. The best thing is for me to go. Then she tried Greece and Tenerife. I want this to be all right, but it's not. I really don't want to be a prostitute anymore for some reason. I just... I don't want to go back to that. Now Jackie is returning to Paddington. I just know that I've got to book into a hotel, and I know that, um... Basically, I've got to sort my life out. The sorting out starts tomorrow. Next morning in Paddington Green, another familiar face is up early for an important job. Oh, I'm so tired. It's so cold. It's so cold, I don't want to get out of bed. Mmm. So... I've got a job for the Daily Telegraph, which starts at half past nine, but it's right over the other side of London. Earlier in the year, Kelly's diary was full, but now the modelling work has dried up. This is her first job in more than a month, and her boyfriend, Gav, is not around. Gab's gone to Austria now, lucky sod, so I'm back to the old drawing board working, which is what I need to do. I need to get some work in. We make the best of a bad job, I think. I swear somebody in this world doesn't want me and Gab to be together. I absolutely swear it. And they're making it as hard as they possibly can. Just to spend time together, but as I say, we make the best of a bad job. Situation. So. Let me in, let me in. As Kelly struggles into work, in Paddington it's rush hour in the minicab business. Chin has been running his car service for 27 years, but some things never change. Eight one. I just said to you they're coming out to you. That means I've called them out for you, haven't I? The cars come, there's no way to press. Listen, I, I... You're like a parrot. Yeah, yeah fine. 8 5 when you're outside the office, call me by the fish and chip shop. I send a lady over to you, yeah? Roger. Yeah. Good morning, car service. It's going to be within 20 minutes, or within 20 minutes. Do you want it? Sorry, sir. Thank you. But it's not just about keeping the customers satisfied. Anybody give me a time for Marn Street? Marn Street. Chin Anybody has 60 drivers to keep happy as well. 48. <laughs> Come on, Ellen, talk to me. 48 for a message. Speak to me, baby. Have you missed me somewhere? I mean, I've been driving around. I haven't heard my call. What's happening? Well, I'm coming down to you sh uh, surely, but slowly. Oh, it seems very slowly. The babies are crying. The babies are crying, Chin. Everybody's kidding, are you? 
Did you hear that? The babies are crying. <laughs> Today, single mum Helen is desperate to start earning. What I'm basically trying to tell him there is that my, <laughs> my children need to be fed, so he's got to start giving me jobs. <laughs> Four hours after forcing herself to get up, Kelly is still hanging around. But for a young model, every job is worth getting out of bed for, however much waiting there might be. Four eight. Come on, Ellen, talk to me. Why are you teasing me, Mr. Chin? You keep calling me as if you've got some big job for me, and then you say, OK. It's a bit of anti-climax, eh? Right. <laughs> well, I suppose to have a nice young lady's voice coming through to you. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. That's what you like, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Chin is most certainly a bit of a flirt. I think it's more than a bit of a flirt. He's too big a flirt. <laughs> I suppose it makes him feel that he's still a man. Oh, that's right. OK, then. OK, I get somebody to pick you up, yeah? Thank you, bye. Eight one. I'm not going another time, Raj. I'm pulling off this job, yes? Well, I ain't got no more work for you, any. Oh, what is I ain't got no more job. So where you, where you pulling off it to go to? Come on, pass it. Yeah, where you going? Where you going? Okay, okay bye. Helen's problems are not with other drivers, but with her love life. In a few months, she's hoping to marry her Nigerian boyfriend, Bioden. But Bioden doesn't yet know if he'll be given permission to enter the country. I'm going to find out tonight whether he's actually got his visa from the British uh, High Commission to come over here and visit, visit us. So that phone call could go one of three ways. He's either going to say to me, yes, darling, I've got the visa, I'm travelling next week Friday, because I know he's booked his flight, or he can say to me, oh, they're still processing it. Or he could say, nah, didn't get it. And I think I'm going to be a very, very, very unhappy lady. That much I can say, because, you know, I put so much into this, and I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to him coming. My kids are looking forward to him coming. I don't even want to begin to think that he's not going to be able to come. Eight one, did you get that? Eight one. Anybody give me time for Marne Street? The studio's finally up and running. Oh, right, there we go. But like Helen, Kelly's mind is on her relationship with an absent boyfriend. Someone in the army and someone in the modeling business, the two jobs just do not mix. It's so hard to spend time with each other. But we manage. You know, it's... At the end of the day, we know we're there for each other. So... There's not a problem with it. Gav and I do have to grab every moment we can with each other, and sometimes that does mean, you know, jeopardising London. Which is bad, and I shouldn't do it. I know I shouldn't do it. And I feel guilty every time I do do it. I haven't given my modelling career a good enough shot. I've really neglected my career this year, I know I have. Ow. But, like every job, it has its, re has its rewards, so... And the rewards don't come every day, and you have to work for the rewards. So, yes, I do want to stay in this business, but... At the same time, I don't want to be doing it forever, and I think there will be a time when I'll just have to say, look, no more. Back on her old patch in Paddington, Jackie has realised that the time to say no more is right now. After two years on the game, she wants out. I mean, I don't mind being known as a, a prostitute who was, but I don't want to be known as a prostitute that always will be. And I think that's a part of my life now, that I'm just, like, thinking, well, yeah, one day I can walk down this gardens and think, well, I've been here, I know what it's all about, I've done it, and I don't do it anymore. And it's just a part of my life which is over. But at the moment, I mean, obviously, there's so much going on what with um, trying to get off the game and everything like that that, you know, I don't quite feel like that right now. It might be business as usual for now, but after months of running away, Jackie has some tough decisions to take. Thanks very much, Nabil. 
and good luck. It's halfway through Helen's shift. At last, she has some passengers and a chance to share the latest developments in her love life. You know, I'm getting married in the summer. It's all going to be new. We need to settle down as a family and get used to things. Beardo's my fiance. Yeah, he's coming over in about a week and a half's time from Nigeria. He's not a British citizen. He's a Nigerian citizen, so he has to get a visa to come over to England, even just to visit. And he's made an application to the British High Commission in Lagos, in Nigeria. And uh, he's going to, well, he's going to let me know tonight whether the application has been successful or not. Back at base, Chin's management skills are being tested by driver 81. You know what's gonna happen? When they start me. 81, we pick that job up every morning. No other driver ever complain. So why are you complaining now? Oh, these are the people that drive Chin crazy. She's a regular customer we pick up her every morning, so why are you pulling off the job? Because we don't have no way to park on everybody is trying to get you to go to work. Well, eight one. You're the driver, so you're out there, you sort it out, yeah? You really can't afford to be impatient in this job. I think you'll have your stress levels will be like a thousand fold. You know. You sit down there, you don't know what's happening, eh? Yeah, of course I do. I used to be a minicab driver before you was born. At the studio, Kelly is impatient to get started. Let me say hi up. Don't pull that. Are we ready? What they want is what they want, and I know to my place. So. Jackie is hoping some professional advice will help her change her profession. I'm 28 and I haven't really got a lot of experience in the world of work, for oh, one okay. reason or another. But um, I was just wondering basically what, what, what's going to be open for me at this age. I mean, right. bearing in mind, I haven't really, I mean, I've got basic qualifications, like O levels and that. But so you've got O levels? Yeah. What O levels do you have, Jackie? Um, English, yep. French. Did I get geography? No, I didn't. Um, history, music. Music? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I did like the music when I was young. Not so many people have done music. Mm. Right. Do you want, I mean, you said that you're, you, know, you want a career change, so I'll come on and talk about that. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what you have been doing? Um, um, <laughs> where your experience <laughs> lies and skills? And... <laughs> Well, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be brutally frank with you. I mean, I, I work as a prostitute right now. Right. So, I mean, I've been doing that for two and a half years. And do, you, do you mind if I make notes? No, not at all, not at all. Um, I've got in, I got into that um, for one reason or another. I mean, it's not really important why, but I mean, I've got, I got into that, and I want to get out of it now. Right, OK, so you want to move on. I want to move on from that. Right. And... Um, so that's why you're here? That's why I'm here, because I'm really not sure where I can go from there. I mean, I'm used to earning a certain income and doing things a certain way, sure. but it's not doing me any me, me no. good mentally or physically, I don't think. So right. it's time for me to get out of that. Right. So it's just a question, well, I'm 28 years old, what is open for me? And 8181. All mobile, stand by. 81. 8181. <laughs> I got some news for you, baby. Would you like to come into the office so I can give it to you, yes? You're gonna love me when I give you this, boy. You're gonna love me. Uh, what's that? Oh, it's, it's, it's a check. For what? Uh, I don't know, it's a check for 40 pounds. Company? Don't know. It's some company. Hello. Two, three, three. Yeah, two, three, got him. Uh, come, in, come inside and I'll give it to you, yeah? He, he drives a company car. Eight one, he drives one of our company car and he's got a parking ticket. Yeah, he hasn't paid it yet. <laughs> he's got the love. He's always getting parking ticket. <laughs> and he says, and that's advertisement, BT. Good. I'll tell you what I've always <coughs> I'll tell you what I've always fancied doing. Mm -hmm. Working on um 
Oh, you get them the wings of hospitals where they um, have breakdowns and things, sort of thing. Where they have breakdowns. You know, you know, mental, not mental, you right. know, not mental institutions, but places. But you know, oh, every hospital has a wing which is is dedicated to people that have breakdowns and are not like the mental health. Yeah, that's the mental health. I'd like to work right. like that. So psychiatric mm. wing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Do you have any experience of anything like that? <laughs> Well, from only first hand, yeah. I mean, I've had I've had breakdowns myself, and right. I mean, I've known what it's like right. when you're feeling really, really low. I remember then when I, I was in hospital and I had, I had to dry me out for alcohol, but that's a different thing. The staff there, some of them were really helpful, and then I just think some of them were just, what were yeah. they doing there? They yeah. needn't have been yeah. there. They weren't helpful, they weren't comforting, they weren't really bothered. Yeah. They were just mm -hmm. thinking, well, we're going to have a fag and a cup of tea, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, if I was more sort of like, mm -hmm. all right in myself, I'm sure I could give a lot more to these people than what they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds what you're saying is that you, you know you have gone through a lot, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of experience in your life that yeah. would be yeah, it's first hand that would enable you to you know really sort of um, understand you know quite a wide range, range of, of things of yeah. people and, and the problems that they're going through. Had you ever sort of thought about some sort of thing to do with counselling? Me going for counselling? No, I'm not even going for counselling. Um, no, um, I, mean, I know your actual counselling itself, you need quite a, a few qualifications to that, but I, mean, I don't see what... I mean, why can't I... I could, I'd like to do something like that. I think yeah. I could help people in some way. That's really, really helpful. They're really, she's really good in there. She's given me loads of information, and I feel quite sort of... Happy and like thinking, well, I've just got to sort of lots of things out. Lots of things are in my head, but I definitely know what I want to do and what sort of work I want to go into. And it's just a question of just getting on and finding a way of doing it. So I'm really, really excited now. At the mini cab office, driver 81 has come to collect what's owed to him. 8-1. No, listen to me. Yeah? You're, you're in trouble. You've got a parking ticket here. Where must I get a parking ticket from? Well, I, I mean, unless you let someone drive your car. So what, can I give it to you? No, you can't, because I never Shh. have no parking. I pay my parking ticket. You what, park what the carriage ray, Chamberlain Road, on the pavement. Not my car. Have a look at this. T.I.M.E. Have a look at it. Come here. Come here. Have a look at this. Whose car is that? Is that mine or yours? Oh, listen. <laughs> no, the dog not in here. Come on, tell me. When does take place? Well, the date is on it. I am not the traffic warden. You're always getting parking ticket because you park all bad places all the time. I never park up there to get no parking ticket. Mm -hmm. You understand? I am not the truck. What do you want to do? Yeah. You better get me better ring them. But I never parked there, so how, okay, so why didn't I get a parking ticket then? I don't know, read it and see, so I'll give them a ring. But even then, what I'm trying to say to you is this, yeah? Mm. This cannot be right. If I park there, they're supposed to issue me, issue me with a parking ticket. I don't know. And, that's and there is no parking ticket, right? Not unless somebody take it off. <laughs> see, the things you do to people, they kick back on you. Well, I'm not going to pay for it, Jim, because right, I, I, then, I Then who's going to pay for it? But I never get any parking ticket. Well, you better ring them. Ring the council. Well, you can them. ring them. Not me. It's your fine. It's your car. Yeah, but I never get any parking ticket. You're disputing it. You ring them. Ask Rima to ring them. Right. Go down to DJ. Quick. Pick up this one. Go going to Paddington for cash. There's some food he's taking there. Quick. Okay, all right. And you, you're going to appeal against it. No, no. Because you know you're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. See you all later. Bye. Bye. See ya. Kelly's photo shoot has gone well, but there's no more work booked in, and the future looks bleak. Hiya. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, it's gone okay. All right. With no work and no boyfriend, yeah. Kelly's hoping to get home to Doncaster, if her agent Patty will let her go. Can I get my day for Monday at all? Is there anything on Monday? No, there's nothing. Well, can I book out then? 
looking to organise the rest of your life? <laughs> no, I'll come back if there's something on. All right, then. I'll talk to you later. Big kiss. OK. Bye. In Kelly's case, the, um, the problem has been that, that after a year of, of really kind of being focused on her career, she met Gavin, who is her first big love. And, you know, it's not Kelly's fault, it's not Gavin's fault, but neither of them live in, neither of them have a structured nine till five job. So Kelly's found herself working around Gavin's schedule with the army. But this week, the army's schedule doesn't allow for Kelly at all. So it's round to her friend Zoe for tea and sympathy. I think this is the hardest part about it, just being away from him. It, yeah. Oh, it hurts me so much. It really does. The one, the one person that I want to be with is not around. You know, the one person that I want to hug me when I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling down and I want to cry. The one person who I want to lift me up is not here. But when does he come back? Um, I don't know. I honestly do not know. It depends, because it depends how far they get in the championships. If they get past the first and second round... Championships? It's in the army, championships. He's skiing for the army. Oh, I didn't realise. I thought it was just a holiday. No, God, no. He's been... He got kind of, like, selected out of the, um... Out of the army to... Excellent. To, yeah, oh, God, I'm so proud of him. We are so very proud of each other. And that's another thing that drives me on, you know. I know that my boyfriend is proud of me being a model. He's not one of these stupid, jealous people who's worried about their girlfriend getting the tits out in front of the camera or worrying about what see-through clothes they're wearing, you know. Oh, you're not allowed to wear that, you're not allowed to do this. Gav is proud of me. He's not, you know... Unless Kelly gets more booking soon, she knows she might not be working as a model for much longer. My career has gone a bit downhill through nobody's fault apart from my own, but I have my reasons for that, but it's just... I've just got to keep persevering and keep my head up, but it, it just... Gets to the point where you think, no... No, I just think, oh, you know... My face it right, I'm too fat, I don't look good enough, you, da, 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 you know, it no, just... No, Kelly, that's not true at all. I don't know if my time's up or what, I really honestly don't. Just keep at it, Kel. Things can only get better. Yeah. Mid-afternoon and Helen's shift is nearly over, but her mother's work is never done. 4 8, four, eight. Four, eight. Yeah, uh, for eight. Just to let you know, I need to be at uh, White City for um, three o'clock. So I'd be grateful if you can get me a job to take me down there to pick up my kids from school. So what time is the pick up for? Three o'clock to pick up my kids. Oh, you got to pick your kids up, yeah? Yeah. Okay then. Give me five minutes and see if I get you something to assist you. Tell me about a big team coming out of the pick one. Come out. Eight one. Shut up and get off the air. Driving a minicab may not suit everyone. But for Helen and her six-year-old twins, it's been a lifeline. This cabin job has been a godsend for me because if I hadn't been doing this, I would be at home, on benefit, going out of my mind. I can honestly say that because before I fell pregnant, I was in a fairly well-paid career job, had a company car, I was flying out to Europe on business conferences and what have you, and it was fun and, you know, whining and dialing business meetings and it was all great and everything and then suddenly I fell pregnant and then I had my twins I had to give everything back company can and then I had to sit at home for two years and unfortunately halfway through all that I split up with my kid's father and it was tough I admire Helen for one thing that as she's a, a single parents like with two kids must be very hard to bring up you know and she looks after them and that gives that uh, when somebody's got things like that in them, you know, it makes you more interested towards them, like, you know what I mean? Because it's very hard for a single mother now, and I don't think she's getting any, any help from the father. So she's got to do it on her own, it's very hard. Very hard. Hi, Miss Downey. It's so late. Yeah, look at your tongue, it's all black. What's who gave you this? It was Kaylee's birthday. They shouldn't put dyes in these sweets like this. What's happened to your shirt? You take it off, Jim P. Yeah. Okay. I didn't 
Okay, bye. Don't run, don't run. Bumi! Bumi, don't run, because she might trip. Bumi! After picking up the twins and doing a full day shift in the minicab, 37-year-old Helen's finally got a moment to sort out her own life. Her fiancé, Bjodin, is hoping to fly to London next week, if he can get his visa sorted out. It'll be the first time he and Helen have seen each other for six months. Hi, darling. So how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. A bit knackered as usual. I'm very excited and looking forward to you coming. So it's a week from now. Have you got your visa yet? No. No? Um, yeah, I'm still working on it. So what, what, give, me, give, me the, give me the lowdown. What's happened so far? When did you just to drop some, some statement of account? Okay. Did they, did they specify the date for you to come back? Why, why is the process so long? You have, you have three days in the group. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's the British world, but it doesn't actually work with that in our case. I get one free. Let me get Bumi and Bosaya for you. Bumi! Bumi! I'm feeling great because you're coming over. I'm feeling great, I have. And we had lollipops and a cake. And all our tongues went green. What do you bring Nigerian sweets for us? <laughs> then it was playtime, then it was literacy hour, then it was lunch time. All right, take care. Hello. Bye, love you lots. Bye. Bye. Right again. You'll know he's going back on Monday. So. He's going to keep waiting. He seems to think it's, uh, he's got a good chance. He's actually bought his ticket now as well. So uh, he wouldn't be going spending 55,000 Naira <laughs> to buy a ticket if he wasn't sure. So he, he sounds very really positive. So, and we know God's looking after us. He has been all these years. So we just have to put our faith in it and hope. Jackie's hope is that soon she'll be able to give up prostitution. The patch of Paddington that's been at workplace for 18 months is no longer somewhere that she wants to be. For a time when I was doing really well, you know, this, this corner has done me, a, done me a lot of money, do you know what I mean? I've, you know, I've had the things I've wanted out of this, this little area of the world. And, but it's, it's just not, it's just not, I can't do it for life, I just can't. I mean, the soonest opportunity I have of getting away from this, but until then, the only way Jackie can earn a living is by going back to the very thing she's trying to escape from. £12 in the car or outside, or £50 inside. Inside what? Inside the house? Is that somewhere we can go? Yeah. Yeah? How far is that from here? More from Paddington Green next Wednesday at 10.20 here on BBC One.